Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GEM, the ECMWF, the ECMWF ensembles, the GFS ensembles and we'll finish up with the UK Met Office run as well. Now I've got unsettled weather over the next few days but we do have a very strong signal now towards the middle of the month high pressure is going to be building in with a big block. At this stage, it looks like it's going to be sitting over the UK, and in the extended range of the models, we're actually starting to see it now head northwards around the 20th of December into the festive period. And we are now seeing some runs showing cold northerly to northeasterly winds for Christmas, as that is now right at the end of the GFS run and its ensembles. We'll have a look at that in a lot of detail, as it is showing the potential for a very cold and snowy Christmas period. So remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link is in the description. So we do have a look at the latest GFS, you can see we do have westerly winds pushing in at the moment. Nothing too crazy, we've got a weather front moving through this evening, and it's going to bring rain for a period of time for many. Then we see a big vigorous low pressure systems trying to push in. However, we see high pressure trying to build up from the south, not particularly successful, and we stay with a southwesterly wind. However, as I said, towards the 15th of December, we see this big high pressure block take control. Now, initially, it's actually a milder air mass. We do pull a bit of an easterly wind in, but there's nothing too crazily cold within it. Maybe cold towards the surface with an inversion, with the um, temperatures towards the surface much colder than they are in the upper airs, but it won't come to much. It may be frosty and around 4 or 5 degrees in the day. Now towards day 10, which starts to come to the uncertain time frame, around the 19th, 20th of December, we see that high pressure retrogressing towards Greenland, and we start to put in a bitterly cold north to northeasterly wind by the 22nd, 23rd of December, with the minus 10 line spreading through many areas, and towards Christmas Day itself, we do have very cold air over the top of the UK. Now the high pressure is flattening by this stage, but we are still very cold, pulling in a slack easterly wind. Now, other models are showing this high pressure staying further northwards for a longer period of time and giving us a really bitterly cold um, outlook. And this GFS run still does do that for a period of time, just not as sustained as we are seeing in some other runs. So, yeah, the signal for a colder period towards Christmas and the end of the year is still there within the models. And it's now coming into the mid to long range forecast, not just the uh, sort of month ahead look ahead that we would do it, that we could have looked at a few weeks ago. And I have said over the last week or two, the signal for high pressure to build up towards the last half or third of December has been there for some time. It's just where it goes. And we're starting to see some of the runs showing it up towards Greenland, which would really uh, spice it up for the Christmas period. It would become yeah very interesting if we did start to see the potential uh, for much colder conditions coming in around Christmas. Now, if we do have a look at the midnight run, which, of course, will be right on the colder end of the spectrum, because this did go bitterly cold. You see the big, strong area of high pressure, 1,045 millibars, heading up towards Greenland, and we are heading in with a bitterly cold northerly wind for Christmas Day. We'll be seeing widespread snow showers, and you can see that bitterly cold air mass pushing in, and this would be a sustained cold spell with high pressure towards Greenland and low pressure towards Northern Canada, not particularly strong at all. Now you can see, yeah, truly exceptional end of the charts here, but we have to compare it, of course, to the 6Z, which gets that high pressure up towards Greenland, pulls in a slack northerly wind, but the high pressure topples. And yes, we do go colder for a period of time with upper air temperatures, pretty chilly, but we don't go that cold for Christmas. There's more of a festive sort of frosty Christmas. So it is not guaranteed seeing this bitterly cold condition towards the Christmas period, but we are seeing signals now that it is a scenario which is pretty much the best we can get uh, 10 to 14 days out still um, from uh, sort of this time frame when the colder runs are appearing. Now if we do have a look at the GM, 
Now, it hasn't fully updated yet, unfortunately, so we can only see it out 262 hours, but we'll have a look at the midnight run as well. So you can see again a lot of westerly winds and then generally we see that high pressure starting to build right towards the end of the run and if we go down to the midnight run and continue it see that high pressure building in and you can see towards 240 hours it is heading northwards and again if we have a look at the northern hemisphere look there is some blocking over towards the arctic and this ridge looks like it's going straight up there you see the cold air towards Scandinavian parts of Russia and we would start to be pulling this in if we did get that high pressure going so of course it's beyond day 10 at this stage so we are looking in the very long term outlook so it's not a forecast at this stage it's just hints um, and this is probably the strongest hint we've had in many years for the possibility of colder weather around or, or major cold weather around Christmas of course it may not come off this could just be the GFS and some of the ensemble members just flirting with the idea but of course we have to take this all into account because we are still as i said two weeks away now if we do have a look at the ecmjf see that what how that does compare you see again westerly winds over the next week or so and then high pressure builds in and then towards day 10 we see it heading northwards we see a lobe of cold air starting to head into scandinavia and of course similar to the gm at day 10 it's showing that high pressure going towards greenland but it doesn't show what happens um, after that, whether it does get to Greenland and if the cold air does get to the UK. So all the models at day 10 are showing this high pressure, trying to move northwards. What happens with the high pressure and if we do get cold air moves in is still up for debate at this stage. And of course, we'll be following it very closely over the next few days and of course the next few weeks as well as we head into the lead up to Christmas. Now, if we do have a look at the East of ensembles, which are very good at showing this, they're showing anomaly charts. So red is high pressure, blue and purples are low pressure and very good at showing where the general um, consensus is within the East of ensembles. Now, if we do move to day seven, which is starting to get towards the time frame where we could start to see some variability, you can see there are four scenarios, all very similar with high pressure to our uh, south or our east or even over the top of the UK and low pressure to our north and our west. Generally, southwesterly winds. But you can see the control and operational run have high pressure more towards the centre of the UK. 12 have it more towards the south. And once again, another 8 have it more to the southeast. Whereas another 12 here towards the top right have it centred over the UK. Again, there's all like slight sh subtle shifts in exact air mass direction um, can change what we see um, towards the surface. Um, but all showing a general higher pressure theme. Towards day 10, you can all see high pressure in control, generally over the top or to our east. You see 17 or a third of the ensemble members have it over top of the UK, slack easterly wind. The 15 have it a bit further northwards and eastwards, pulling in a bit of an easterly wind. But as we saw by the GFS and by the other runs, there isn't that much cold air to our east at this stage. So probably wouldn't come to much. Another 12 have something similar with big high pressure towards Scandinavia and over towards the north of the UK. Again, a slack easterly wind. And another seven have it sent over Europe. And more would be of a south to south easterly wind. Still probably a little bit chilly, but could bring milder air in if we get the exact orientation. If we do head out to 300 hours, you can start to see things starting to sort of diverge. Now you can see 25 or 49% of the ensembles have high pressure towards Scandinavia, starting to pull in an easterly wind. Again, too difficult to say at this time whether it would be a cold easterly wind, but if we did keep that blocking there, eventually that cold air would get displaced towards Europe and the UK. Another 17 have that high pressure over to the, and to the north of the UK, stretching up towards Greenland, and that could potentially start to bring cold and northerly winds in if we did the run that on another couple of days. And finally, another nine have more of that high pressure flattening down into Central and Eastern Europe with more of a westerly theme. Now, if we go right towards the end of the run, at Christmas Eve, you can see for 25 or 49% have an easterly wind another 17 have high pressure over the top and to the north of the uk pulling in more of a slack easterly wind and potentially colder air another nine have a bit of a mixed bag with the jet stream sort of all over the place with some blocking to our north and our west but not major blocking to completely block out the jet stream this could be a bit of a southerly shifted jet stream where we do see colder but unsettled conditions again i'd favor more of the high pressure scenarios at this stage they don't look massively cold and wintry but as we saw by the gfs operational run 
Very subtle shifts in ink positioning this high pressure will give that cold polar plunge in from the north or the east. So we'll have to keep an eye really what happens over this. It could be a scenario where this colder spell did get pushed back. We see it maybe right towards the end of the year or the GFS operational runs could be looking at something. Because of course they did jump off, uh, uh, jump on the recent cold spell with Storm Arwen. Um, a good few days earlier than the other runs did, especially at the day 10 time frame. So, yeah, I definitely think we'll have a very good idea what's going to happen with this high pressure within the next maybe five days. But in the next five days, it is going to be a lot of flip-flopping within the models. I guarantee you we're going to be seeing some very extreme runs with bitterly cold, minus 10 upper air temperatures for Christmas Day. Um, and we'll see other runs with mild flat westerly winds. Um, and we've just got to keep an eye on all these scenarios. But at this stage, I definitely do suspect the high pressure scenario potentially shifting to our north is the more favoured situation. And that will favour potentially colder condition doesn't look like we're going to be seeing any flat westerly and stormy for christmas at this stage does look like it'll at least be cold and frosty if not much colder and maybe snowy and we'll have to keep an eye on that now if we do have a look at the gfs ensembles now of course they haven't fully updated yet they go out to the 20th of december you can see at the moment it is around average drops below average over the next day or two then rises significantly above average and stays well above average you can see with the high pressure from around the 15th of december to the 20th of december virtually no rainfall so it's going to be generally dry and maybe frosty overnight maybe some fog is around as well and temperatures around average even though the upper temperature is quite warm we'll likely see an inversion towards the end of this run you do start to see some of those ensemble members dropping quite cold including the operational run starting to dip down but not going majorly cold yet, as the ensemble run hasn't quite finished. But if we go back to the 6 Z run, you can see beyond the 20th of December, you can see about half of the ensemble members show something much, much colder for the days leading up to Christmas. You can see a good 5 or 10 ensemble members getting the temperature well below average, if not down to minus 5, or even minus 10 at 50 HPA. There's about 5 ensemble members, maybe 5, 6, 7 ensemble members getting down to minus 10 at 50 HPA, which would be plunging us into the freezer. Precipitation signal returns on some, so lower pressure potentially moving in, and with the blocking around, that only really means one thing, and that would be low pressure in for the north or the east, so colder, snowier, conditions now if we have a look at the sea level pressure you can see generally high pressure in is in control and even to the longer term high pressure generally is still in control but some are dipping down showing potentially low pressure moving in uh, if we do have a look at dew points again reports of air mass you can see right in the longer term that air mass signal is turning much much colder around freezing or just a touch above freezing now it is ensembles so there's a lot of milder and colder outliers sort of offsetting it but the consensus is around average uh, sorry not around average around freezing which is going to be maybe cold enough for some wintriness so i have to keep an eye really on that and if we have a look at glasgow which of course would be seeing any northerly wind maybe 12 to 24 hours um, faster than uh, London, for example, in the longer term. You can see, again, dew points much, much colder in the longer term. Sea level pressure, once again, dropping in the longer term, lower at them over the next maybe four or five days, but higher pressure is going to be controlling Scot Scottish uh, conditions as well from around the 16th, 17th, December to around the 21st, 22nd. So, so we're still going to see the dry conditions in Scotland might just take another, an extra couple days to get the high pressure there into the north. And if we do finally have a look at the upper air temperatures and precipitation, you can see up and down over the next weeks a typical zonal sine wave. You can see there warmer, colder, warmer, colder, warmer sectors, and then generally high pressure with minimal precipitation. And then you see towards the longer term, much colder runs starting to appear. Again, similar to London with some getting down to very, very cold conditions at 850 HPA, dipping to around or below average in the long term. But of course, colder and milder runs are offsetting that. So we'll have to see really what happens. It's looking interesting towards the Christmas period. Nothing definitive at this stage, just the signal though. We could potentially be seeing something much, much colder with some of these runs that are starting to appear. Now, if we finally have a look at the UK Met of his run happening in the next five days, you can see generally uh, we've got rain pushing in this evening, maybe a bit of snow over Scotland, but it should slowly, slowly clear towards this evening, overnight, and by the morning, a few showers packing into the west, but nothing too major. Beyond that, through Friday evening, we're starting to see a weather front push in, and by 
midday on Saturday, heavy rain is spreading in, and that will continue throughout most of Saturday. And then more heavy rain, especially in the south, through Sunday, as more weather fronts push in. But Sunday evening, there's potential for a bit of a potent little low pressure system developing to the north with heavy rain, and could be some strong winds in there. At this stage, I wouldn't say it would be named uh, be a named storm, but potentially you could see yellow or uh, yellow wind warnings in force for that. We'll have to keep an eye really on that system for our Sunday. And just generating a lot of unsettled conditions with bands of rain moving in over the next sort of five days. However, as I said, towards the 15th, 16th of December, we'll start to see that high pressure building in from the south. And it'll turn things much, much drier. Now, if we have a look at the max temperatures, you can see this afternoon temperatures around 6, 7 degrees. So not massively cold, but not particularly mild either. Overnight tonight, a bit of a frost in the north, potentially. Generally, most areas staying a touch uh, a touch above freezing and by friday afternoon widely temperatures four five six degrees so pretty chilly but nothing massively cold again friday evening maybe a more widespread frost across the north and parts of the east even into england as well dropping to around or maybe a touch uh, below or above freezing and by Saturday, much milder air is pushing in by the afternoon and evening with double digits in the south, 12, 13 degrees potentially by Sunday before cold air does push in to the north. But in the south, we're going to be seeing some milder weather with potentially temperatures, as I said, getting to double digits, much milder than we have had recently. So you can see over the next few days, it's going to be unsettled. Chilly initially, but then turning milder towards the weekend with potentially a bit of stormy weather, maybe in the far north for Sunday. Beyond that, into the middle of next week, high pressure will be building in from the south and reaching all areas by the end of the working week next week. And then beyond that, the uncertainty does come in. And as we head towards uh, early or the last third of December into the festive period, we do have signals for that high pressure to still be around and potentially shifting northwards, giving us maybe something a little bit colder and maybe snowier as well. So I have to keep an eye really on what happens with that. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.